Okay, well, thanks for showing up. Uh, my name is Goel Janssen, and um, about a year ago, I uh, I sent an email to the New Geeks development mailing list, asking for uh, whether somebody knew a way for me to do an internship uh, that was related to GNU Geeks or GNU Guile. And uh, I was lucky enough that uh, Piotr Prince uh, uh, replied to me, and I found a really interesting place uh, at the UMC Utrecht. And one of the things I uh, worked on during my internship, in the, in the last weeks of it, uh, was something called workflow management. And to understand uh, the concepts of workflow management that I'm going to try to address. Oh, I, uh, yeah, somebody signed me that I should talk louder, so I'll try that. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to show is uh, I've implemented a couple of record types uh, on top of uh, GNU Geeks' uh, infrastructure for package management. And oh, this thing works. Ah. Um, uh, and to, to understand what I'm trying to achieve is that um, I'm now working at an institute where we are doing um, a data analysis. And so, so we have some, some initial data set, the, the yellow uh, node here. Uh, and then through running programs on it, we try to extract information from it, filter the information, or try to get useful um, research results from it. Um, and eventually we want some undeniable proof for our theorem or for uh, whatever. And uh, if you look closer into the, the nodes labeled A to N, um, we can see that these processes are, can be really simple, like a grep for some information out of the file. Uh, or uh, a little bit more advanced, uh, running an R script or some other foreign language to Guile, I know, I know. Um, so uh, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make an easy way to, to run these things, uh, either serially or in parallel. Um, and what I'm trying to capture is uh, a workflow which is for me, it's just a set of processes that we should run to get from an initial data set to the undeniable proof. And I am not uh, including the, the data into the, uh, into the whole uh, process, but that's just something you put in and get out. Uh, and actually, you can, uh, if you look at real world situations, it's more common that uh, you don't get a serial process going from A to N, all uh, simple steps, but more likely you can run a couple of things in parallel, uh, like you see from the node A to, uh, uh, we can run three processes at the same time, and at some other occasions you need to, some process needs to wait for input from various other processes, and uh, at that point, if you would do this with a shell script, uh, it would, could become pretty complex. And it gets really interesting if, uh, if you can run things in parallel on multiple computers. That's also something hard to do with, with shell scripts, I guess. Um, so uh, what we have at, at uh, UMC Utrecht is we have multiple uh, computers all connected to a single storage. Uh, and this, this storage is actually uh, quite expensive, so um, it's, it's a two-step thing. So we have storage that we can actively use that's connected to these compute nodes, but we also have storage that's used for archival purposes and backups so that when, um, when a hard disk crashes or when more hard disks crashes, then this data gets lost, but some more um, valuable data won't get lost. Uh, that's important to note for if we want to run processes, we should store this data not inside the GNU store, uh, in the Geek store, but outside of it so we can archive it. So uh, to run things on multiple compute nodes, we have this infrastructure, a, uh, it's called a job control system. And you basically pass it a shell script with some additional syntaxes like how much memory do you want to allocate and how much time do you need it. and then it'll run the commands in that uh, bash script. Yeah, really, bash, not shell, just bash. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate for, uh, for GNU Guile users, right? But we'll get to that. Um, 
and then the, the job control system can uh, can queue these on these compute nodes or run them all together. Um, so uh, what I've created are two record types, and this is the first one. It defines the, a process, which is the the A to N nodes, and it looks kind of similar to a package, but only a little bit more simple. So it has a name and a version and a description and a synopsis. Description fell off the, the page, not too bad. Um, but what's more interesting here is that a process can have a package input, which are Geeks packages. Um, so that should look familiar. Uh, but also it can have data inputs, uh, which can be anything you like. You can create a simple list of, of samples or just a string or a number or uh, you can make some more advanced things like um, an associate list with, with multiple items, um, which you will, uh, will later use in the procedure. And it has some uh, runtime complexity specification in both space and time. We, with, with this information, we can say something about how long the process will run. And as you can see, this is just uh, scheme code. So you could include uh, the size of a file and then say, OK, it needs uh, uh, twice the, the the amount of RAM to uh, of, of this file size to uh, to compute. So something you can test out and try. Um, and then with with this information, is is all pretty basic. But then there's this uh, procedure that actually executes the commands in the shell script. And this procedure is, and I hope this looks a bit familiar because it's been addressed in a couple of talks before me. It's uh, a G expression, and it's basically the, the quasi-quoting, but then in a Geeks-specific way. Um, and uh, this G expression, uh, you, can, you can directly input uh, packages from Geeks. And then the nice thing about this is that when you try to run the procedure, when you turn it into a derivation, and then later uh, output the, the actual script that rolls out of this, uh, it automatically builds the packages for you that you are actually using. So that's really useful. And then now I want to get to the, the second type. So now we have these, these processes. But how are we going to connect them all? Now we need a different type for that. Uh, that simply, again, it looks quite familiar, I hope. Uh, there are two things here that are interesting, the restrictions and the processes. So processes is just a list of all the nodes that you want to uh, uh, use in this workflow. So these are just uh, uh, the processes you defined earlier. And the restrictions should be read in a way that you say the first uh, depends on uh, the completion of the second. And that's a really nice way. So from, from these restrictions, you can determine its uh, dependency graph, basically. Um, and that's all to it, because with this information, we can now construct uh, a dependency graph of processes that we've defined using G expressions. So um, how that works is that you have this process definition, and then you turn it into a derivation, which will uh, end up in the, the geek store. Right? And when you build that derivation, it will build the dependent programs for you. And it will return a job script for you. And that job script is something you can pass to the job control system that then will uh, distribute it to one of the compute nodes in your cluster. That's basically the entire uh, ID. Um, so the the job script, of course, uh, uses the programs that you've um, you've built earlier. The derivation did that for you. Uh, so there's one thing to note here that for in order for the job script to actually work on a different computer, it needs to have access to uh, the programs. So it kind of depends on a shared storage for all your compute nodes. Uh, yeah, maybe you should address that. I don't know. For us, it works. But maybe for others it doesn't, I don't know. Um, 
so uh, I uh, I probably needed to write some uh, tutorial or something because uh, I think the easiest way to, to get down to how this works is to just try it out and I did that so um, you can find it on this uh, web page you can download source code for my project um, I, I actually fork geeks for this but um, I want to include it into the upstream distribution and I hope uh, when it's stable enough that um, one of the Geeks maintainers will uh, allow me to introduce the workflow management bits into Geeks upstream. Uh, yeah, and if you have questions after this talk or when you're at home and you want to ask a question, you can always email me. Um, yeah, so I'd like to acknowledge a few people. Piotr Prince first for, uh, for letting me do this internship. Uh, Joop de Ligt, he, uh, uh, he was also involved in my internship. And uh, Ricardo Worms and uh, Ludwig Cortez for helping me. Uh, Ricardo gave me some very useful feedback on, on what the record types should look like. Uh, and Ludwig Cortez, yeah, you're just a great inspiration, right, for, for almost anything. So, yeah, and uh, you probably see me around in the, the GNU Geeks development mailing list and the IRC chats. So thanks for all the help for those who, uh, who helped me. So, yeah. <laughs> so are there any questions? Some way of integrating this with the, with the Geeks patch management system that we actually can execute jobs or something. Yeah, I thought about that, but I um, I even tried that. But the problem, so so the question is, can we can we integrate the um, the the data with with the Geeks package management system? So I suspect that what you want is to uh, execute the jobs immediately and then put the results into the Geek store, right? I thought about that, and my first version did that, but uh, we ran out of space pretty, cr pretty quickly on the, the Geek Store. And then we had this problem, like, uh, these are really huge data sets that we're processing. We're, we're talking uh, hundreds of uh, gigabytes here per data set. And if you all put that in the store, then you probably end up uh, saying, hey, my GNU Store is pretty big. Let's garbage collect it. And at that point, you could lose the results of your research. And you don't want that. So uh, we're looking into letting some other system manage the data and archive it for us. Actually, there's already such a system available. Um, so why not let that system handle the data management part and let Geeks handle the um, a package uh, deployment and handle the, the generation of the scripts? so that it can be executed air, um, easily with existing uh, job control systems. So yeah, it's a trade-off, and I don't know what's the best uh, way to go here, but this is actually the only way it works for us, so. From own experience, I can say that having a shared store is sometimes a little challenging. Uh, would it be possible to combine what, what you've done, the creating the job script, with uh, what Piotr did, which was creating relocatable binaries, so that users can use Geeks locally uh, together with your, um, um, your tool, and then serialize the complete environment, push that over to the, uh, to the cluster. So then you wouldn't have to have a shared store. Um, maybe I'm wrong about this, but it seems like this would be possible. Yeah, so if I can repeat the question in a bit more shallow way, <laughs> would you like to um, run uh, or push a container with all the deployed software to uh, some other machine, then uh, run your data analysis there, and then get the results back? It's basically what you're trying to do, I guess, to avoid a shared store system. 
I think we can do that because we can spawn containers with geeks. We can uh, uh, pack everything into a container, right? But I also seem to remember that that's not really the way we want things to go, right? Because then we're kind of giving up on, on the idea that we can efficiently distribute software and use it, right? So maybe it's easier to, I don't know, um, fix your uh, shared storage system, because... <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> but, we can, but we can definitely look into it, and uh, I would like to look into uh, making a, um, like an, an app bundle. Yeah, I know it's not a great word, <laughs> so, but uh, kind of like a container. Uh, of course, we do that with Geeks, not with Docker or something. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, we can distribute that to a compute node and run it there. So we have two types. Um, would it be possible maybe to have a, another type that you could use within the workflow that could possibly read data in and out of the store? Um, that might mean that you can actually use both of those approaches or either of them all at the same time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like. I'd like to welcome you to write it. <laughs> I don't know how it would look exactly, but yeah, maybe. Could try that. Could you just say a few words about the existing tools that are being used, for instance, at your institute, and how it improves on it, and, and what the reception is also for your tool? OK, so the existing tool we have is uh, Perl. <laughs> 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 so uh, we're looking into uh, workflow management systems and we tried the common workflow language um, and I was the first to try it and then I tried the hello world and then thought hmm I really need a programming language for my workflow definitions to be flexible enough to address every case and that's exactly what the work common workflow management language is developing into they include a JavaScript into their uh, declarative types and so yeah they're including a language into there and I think that the best language to do it is geeks uh, guile sorry with some geeks package management because that's very important for us um, so uh, the reception is that nobody's writing um, workflows as of yet at our institute because they're writing Perl code and it works we have these huge files of Perl code, 700 lines of code is, is like the, the basics and then comes the error handling and the stuff around it. <coughs> um, but we're trying to get started on writing workflows uh, in, in this way or some other workflow language. Um, but then, you know, first you need to solve the, the deployment problem of, of software and Geeks is the only thing doing it right. I believe. So that leaves this workflow language as the only language that addresses the full thing. Right, so I'm pretty confident we're, uh, we're going to use it. Any more questions? Okay, then I would like to thank you. <laughs>